This is what I learned from my first SMMA. So I had a Mets by SMMA. I got to 2K per month, four clients. I was in Thomas Gunn, it's 300 agencies. If you know, you know. And I hated the niche a lot, obviously, because it's med spots. They don't lie with my values at all. And I stopped trying, honestly, and I stopped sabotaging because I knew this wasn't for me. Number one, don't sell your thing to broke people. Just don't. I worked extremely hard, and I got paid 500 per month per client, which is nothing. Getting a small boutique business from 0 to 10K is really hard, and you can't really charge a lot. Small business owners don't have money to spend, so probably you're not going to get a set of fees. Getting a business from 10k to 20k is way easier and you can easily charge 3k per month. Successful business owners can spend money, so you can probably get a 3 to 5k setup fee as well. Successful business owners usually work harder and they're way easier to deal with. Trust me, when I was working with these small businesses that were, that were broke, it just wasn't easy. Action item number one, write this down. Sell to rich people. Shift to your target clients. It's a very simple shift and it's going to save you a lot of headache. Trust me. Number two, don't position yourself as an agency. People hate the word agency. It just turns people off. Agencies work outside the business, so you're not really working in the business. You're just like this guy outside the business that takes some work, do this for me, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to do that. There are a billion agencies that are run by 16-year-olds, so that name is just messed up. People have set beliefs about what agencies can charge, so you can't really raise prices that much. And agencies have very high churn because the client doesn't feel like your partners and you're working outside the agency. Yeah. Actually, item number two, write this down. Position yourself as your growth partner. If you're a growth partner, you're not really going to leave and you're going to be in control of most things in the business. I'm going to touch on this in a few slides. Stop using the word client and agency. Just stop. Just use the word partner and growth partner. Trust me, it's going to make sales way easier. And the positioning is very powerful. Number three, outreach is not a numbers game. Everyone says, oh, just volume, volume, volume. You got to text like 500 people per day. Bro, no. No. I land all my clients in my current business without a lot of effort. Like 10 emails and a couple of DMs. I never scraped leads or bought leads for my SMMA and my current business. You need extreme volume if you're just bad at it or dumb. That's when you need extreme volume if you're stupid. Cold calling does require some volume, but that's why you have to change it up. Don't want to call calling, we're going to touch on this now. People who just spam the message over and over are a dumb 14 year old and you don't want to be a dumb 14 year old. Action item number three. Pick who you ask you to very, very carefully. Outreach is an art. It's not a volume game. Trust me. Method of outreach depends on where they get least traffic. So if you find this person you want to work with, this business owner, and you can tell they probably get a lot of attention on their Instagram. Try their LinkedIn. Try calling them on their phone. Try to find their email somewhere online. Like, be smart with it. There's no specific method. Do at least 15, 30 minutes of research before reaching out. People usually just call people, call businesses, or DM them without any research. Trust me, reach out before. I mean, do your research before. It's going to pay so much. This is the script I've used. So first, compliment them on something they've done. This comes from the research. Ask a question out of curiosity, and then ask to book a call. And you can do this over two emails or two DMs or whatever. It doesn't have to be one, but this is uh, the three-step process that I used, and, it, and I've got insane book rates. Number four, don't do something that's against your values. So I touched on this earlier with the med spa. I hate Botox, injections, fillers, beauty. Like, I really don't know what. If you hate something, you will subconsciously sabotage yourself. And this is what happens to me. Your life will be miserable because you hate your clients. Would you have more would you have more energy to work on something you hate or something which you don't really mind? Obviously, you don't really mind. You don't gotta be in love with it. You just gotta not hate it so much. Because if you hate it, you're just not gonna it's not gonna grow. Actually, item number four. Choose a niche with people you don't mind working with. Even better, people who you're excited to speak to and you like working with. People who you look up to. People who you can see being your friends. Money will come when work feels like fun. And right now, my clients, I love working with them. It doesn't feel like work whatsoever. Exactly. Alright, number five. I had no impact on product. I had to rely on ads to get the net spots more clients. 
and I didn't really know if the product was good. A good product is the number one thing you need to be a successful business. If I wanted to get involved in product, I would have to study the procedures and like, no, I'm not going to do that. If the Mets ball owner is bad at her craft or his craft, you can't do anything about it. Like you can't tell them, oh, inject better because you don't know anything and you hate it. So as an agency, you don't really have an impact on products. You just kind of run ads or something just to get them more clients. Actually, on number five, be a growth partner to a business you like. You can influence product. And when you influence product, product becomes better and the money becomes better. This is the shift you have to make. Stop being an agency, be a growth partner instead. Position yourself in this way so you can grow the business from the core. You can affect the product itself. And here's a bonus, don't be in the ads business. This is something from Hermosi, and he always says this. Don't just try to compete for ads if your product is shit. Be in the product business. You need to, you don't need to compete with ads if your product is insanely good. You need ads to survive if your product is 